Cybernetics has given us computers, video cameras, lasers, DVDs, microwaves, internet, email, and YouTube, among many other things. It also lets us understand how the human body, the brain, and governments work. Let's find out what is cybernetics. There are several stages for the science of cybernetics. It began centuries ago and then disappeared. Plato and Aristotle mentioned cybernetics as the art of piloting a ship. That is what the word Kubernetes means. In the 19th century, the French philosopher André Marie Ampère used the word cybernetique as the science of government of the state or a country. In 1948, as a result of the first Macy Foundation meetings, Norbert Wiener wrote The Mathematical Foundation of Cybernetics in a book he called Cybernetics, Controlled and Communications in the Animal and the Machine. The book shook the scientific world and cybernetics spread to many sciences as biology, philosophy, sociology, and politics, to name a few. Ross Ashby wrote Introduction to Cybernetics in 1956. His contributions are enormous. He starts by clarifying that from the cybernetic perspective, machines are not things or physical entities in themselves, but ways of behaving. Machines are what they do. He starts his book by saying that the most fundamental concept in cybernetics is that of difference. Difference can exist between two things or because the same thing shows a difference over time. Ashby also says that the subject matter of cybernetics is the domain of all possible machines and is only secondarily interested if informed that some of them have not yet been made, either by man or by nature. What cybernetics offers is the framework on which all individual machines may be ordered, related, and understood. Ashby writes, Cybernetics stands to the real machine, electronic, mechanical, neural, or economic, such as geometry stands to a real object. Cybernetics deals with all forms of behavior and so far as they are regular or determinate or reproducible, says Ashby. Materiality is irrelevant. For instance, the outer case of a laptop computer is not relevant to its processing power. Ashby was very rigorous. He defined transition, for instance, the sun changing the color of the skin from white to tan. A transformation is a set of transitions. A transformation describes a machine. Ashby speaks of theoretical machines using a symbolic approach to machine descriptions. It is from these paper and pencil machines, mostly in matrix form, that he discovers the law of requisite variety, now called Ashby's Law. This is one of Ashby's theoretical machines. This is a machine in the metal. I heard Stafford Beer say, that his friend Ross Ashby was an absolute genius. The cybernetic approach is a lot like what you do when you play poker or make a bet. You have to count and compute what are all the possible outcomes and then what is most likely to happen. Ashby explains, cybernetic typically treats any given particular machine by asking not what individual act will it produce here and now, but what are all the possible behaviors that it can produce? The connection between this approach to machines and information theory is important. Information theory is characterized essentially by dealing always with a set of possibilities. What is important is the extent to which the system is subject to determining and controlling factors. Energy necessary for the transformation is not important. It is taken for granted. This is how cybernetics got into biology and then into soft sciences. Cybernetics must thus be defined as the study of systems that are open to energy but are close to information and control. 
In the 1960s, Stafford Beer took many ideas of previous cyberneticians and put them together to create management cybernetics, the science of effective organization. Beer's main applications started in the world of business and management in general. Shown here is his groundbreaking application of an operations room in Chile in 1973. A fascinating story. Much of management cybernetics is based on Ashby's law of requisite variety. You can look for that in YouTube also. I have used management cybernetics to go back and recapture the original purpose of André Marie Ampère as the science of governing the state. Thanks to these and other intellectual giants, cybernetics has become a scientific paradigm. It is a different way of making science perhaps the biggest portion of the apple of knowledge.